Hello, everyone. So uh, we're connected, just uh, waiting for the clock to turn over at the start. Be less than a minute. Okay, Nemo Tessa Begoetto Araheto, Sama, some Buddha saw, Nemo Tessa Begoetto Araheto, Sama, some Buddha saw, Nemo Tessa Begoetto Araheto, Sama, some Buddha saw. So I'm going to address this evening uh, some uh, ideas around uh, consciousness and particularly the question of whether a purely mechanical entity could ever be considered conscious and in, in what uh, what circumstances so first of all we need to be clear about what we mean by consciousness and in a lot of the um, a lot of the discourse i think in the uh, in the West, it, it tends to be a bit vague. Uh, consciousness is not, in, at least in the Buddhist understanding, consciousness is not thought, it's not intelligence, it's not um, manipulation of information. Uh, consciousness is the simple fact of being aware, of having an experience. This chitta is the one that knows. Uh, puru in Thai. Um, so this is this is quite different from manipulating uh, mental objects, which is thought. Thought in relation to consciousness is an object. It's an object of consciousness, and consciousness itself is the uh, purely subjective. Uh, and. Um, as I've often said, it's difficult to understand, not because it's complicated, but because it's so pristinely simple. It's, it's just immediate. There, there's just the knowing. <clears throat> and what um, uh, one thing that distinguishes consciousness from uh, other mental process is that there is no way even in theory to reduce consciousness to an algorithm uh, an algorithm for those who are not aware of the uh, not familiar with this uh, mathematical term it it can re it refers to a stepwise process that you can reduce a process to a series of steps a um a procedure you know, a leads to b leads to c or even more complicated ones might be uh, like if a then b if b then c and so on you can you can uh, infinitely elaborate an algorithm but consciousness doesn't go through an algorithm it just is it's just immediate awareness and i think this should be obvious just from a, a moment of uh, you know introspection you, know, you you're just consciously aware you're not doing anything there, there's no uh build up to um you know to building a structure of awareness there's just awareness you just know you know <clears throat> So this uh, this means that um, consciousness is is one of the four primaries in Abhidhamma. There's matter, consciousness, mental objects, and nibbana. And one of the ideas of Abhidhamma is that these are the primary realities; they can't be reduced one to the other. So consciousness doesn't arise out of anything else it just is 
but it, it, it's part of the conditioned world. So it does have causes, causes and conditions. So a moment of awareness, conscious knowing, uh, like everything else, has multiple causes. One will be the um, the external object of which one is aware. Uh, one will be the, um, the sense organs through which consciousness is operating, seen in the case of eye consciousness. And uh, one is the previous moment of consciousness. Yeah. <clears throat> Consciousness doesn't arise uh, out of out of uh, out of nothing. You know, nothing nothing is um, created out of nothing. Creative ex nihilo, nihilo is not a thing. Uh, everything has causes and conditions. And it's necessary for consciousness to exist for it to have a previous cause. And this is one of the uh, strong arguments in favor of rebirth that. Uh, consciousness only can exist because of previous moments of consciousness. So if we go back in in time to our the first uh, arising of consciousness in the womb, where did that come from? It came from a previous lifetime. It can't arise out, out of nothing. <clears throat> There's no kind of material process that can produce consciousness because material processes, whether they're biological or mechanical or electronic, all all um, material processes uh, must be algorithmic. You know, they must follow uh, in a in a set of procedures that we can break down <clears throat> and examine and modify. But consciousness just occurs. It's a uh, immediate uh, occurrence. You know? an, an immediate event, let's say, is process. We shouldn't think of consciousness as a thing. This is something that um, uh, is important to kind of shift our, our thinking about because uh, we're misled by language and it doesn't matter whether you're speaking English or Thai or Pali or Sanskrit, we use nouns to refer to consciousness. You know, in English, consciousness, Pali, Chitta, Thai, Puru, we use thing that we're referring to, but we're not. It's really a process. There, there's a knowing. <clears throat> And as I said, this knowing is uh, immediate, uh, constant, simple uh, awareness. You know, there, there's nothing. There's nothing more to it than that. Uh, but it's it's it is the most um, immediate, intimate reality of our experience you know, because we are conscious. <clears throat> One way, uh, one way of talking about it, when modern philosophers of mind talk about consciousness, they talk about the uh, made-up word that they use is qualia, which is uh, a purely subjective experience. They call it qualia. Um, and there's no... Um, one, every person, every conscious entity has, has this... This is the nature of their experience. They have qualia, which are the perceived objects of consciousness. And non-conscious entities do not have that. And one of the um, one of these uh, writers uses has a uh, an essay. Uh, what is it like to be a bat? Uh, some I forget, that may not be the exactly the correct title, but uh, he goes on about the experience of a bat, which is very alien and different from a human experience. But we can uh, somewhat imagine it. And, we, and the question, to ask the question, what is it like to be a bat, makes sense, right? Because we know there there is something that it's like to be a bat. The bat has some form of consciousness. It has some form of 
qualia or conscious experience. But if we were to ask the question, what is it like to be a baseball bat? That's a meaningless question. There's uh, nothing that it's like to be a baseball bat, right? Because a baseball bat has no, no consciousness. <clears throat> so, uh, some of the modern uh, philosophers of mind that take a materialist uh, perspective, which I think has been dominant in scientific circles for a long time, although that may be changing, they um, are unable to really explain how consciousness can arise they, they uh, but they hold out the hope that someday it will be explained in a purely mechanical way and um of course the uh the vehicle <clears throat> the, the material vehicle that would explain the arising of consciousness for for these materialist thinkers would be the chemical reactions in the brain the electrochemical processes going on in the brain and there's sometimes it seems to be a assumption that consciousness somehow arises out of complexity that if a system gets complicated enough it'll suddenly become conscious um, and there's no explanation for how this could come about or why um, and, it, and it really doesn't make sense uh, and I think part of the, um, you know, this raises the whole question of mind, <clears throat> mind, body, or mind, brain. Uh, sometimes it's called the mind body problem. What is the relationship between the mind and the body, or particularly the brain? You might note as a, as a kind of a side note that in uh, ancient times, and they had no sense that the brain had anything to do with the mind. Uh, Buddha Gosa in the city Maga, in the section on the 32 parts of the body, he goes through the 32 organs and gives some description of their shape and their size and their function. And he obviously has no idea what, a, what the brain does. The brain is described as a kind of marrow that fills the skull. And when you get a cold or a flu, it liquefies and drips out of your nose. So they obviously had no no sense that the brain had anything to do with thinking or consciousness. <clears throat> uh, we now, of course, know a lot more about the brain, but we're still not anywhere near to explaining how it could uh, produce consciousness. And uh, I would suggest that it doesn't, that it's really the other way around, that the uh, mind uh is is one of the forces that <coughs> creates the form the vehicle for itself in in the in the body this is the dependent origination because of consciousness name and form <coughs> and um the brain actually functions i would say not like a computer but more like a radio it's the interface between mind and matter. 